Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the presentation, please. Is the presentation going on? Can like can everybody see the presentation? I have to present it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just just. Okay. Um. So before we start with the presentation, um. Hello to everyone present here. I'm Emily. And uh, so before we begin with this workshop, um, there's this one question I would last, uh, I would like to ask everyone here. Um, why or why would you be creating a portfolio for yourself? Why have you come to this session? If anybody would like to, you can go ahead um, and unmute yourself or you can even go on the chat. So that people can know our work. Yes. Um, anybody else? To present ourselves. Yes. To express better. Okay. Okay. Uh, to show and not just tell about our work. Yes. To create more opportunities for ourselves. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think you all of you have given uh, quite a few good pointers and such. And um, to make this also to put this out more simply and more precisely, uh, a portfolio serves as a very important tool in our careers. And whether we're currently job seeking or not, or if we're in the design field or not, it can it is serves as a platform through which we can present ourselves, as someone mentioned before. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, so, what exactly is a portfolio? A portfolio is essentially a compilation of your works and a professional documentation which serves as a proof of your previous accomplishments and also showcases samples of your previous work. Well, essentially, or well, to put it, um, to put it forward, there is no real limit to how uh, you can present your portfolios. You can have a physical book that documents your work um, in text or even a website where you can digitally showcase your works. Next slide, please. Why a portfolio? Uh, a portfolio, as also mentioned in the comments before, a portfolio does an amazing job with showcasing your work rather than you having to explain someone about them. And it is also something where people can see for themselves what you are capable of and all of your, all of your previous accomplishments. Also, um, other than creating portfolios for job opportunities, um, creating portfolios can also be a very practical way of keeping track of your progress in the work you've done or your work you're doing and also whatever you have accomplished through them. Next slide, please. Okay, what do you put in a portfolio? Um, well, to know more in detail, we have our three special speakers today who will guide you in just that. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you so much, Dave, for your great guiding. I hope now you all would be very clear about the theme and are excited too to meet the speakers of today's evening. So now I would like to present the stars of this evening, the most awaited Mr. Prakash Chandra, Mr. Vishwa Prasanna, and Ms. Pragya Ramji. Mr. Prakash Chandra is a design intern at Samsung and is a final year right at IIT Guwahati, while Ms. Pragya is the upcoming interaction designer and is a former intern at D. Shaw and Cooperative. She is a final year right at IIT Guwahati. 
and Mr. Vishwa Prasanna is the upcoming industrial designer at Havels and is a former designer at Samsung. So without any further delay, let's get started. I would like to call Ms. Pragya Ranji. Please see, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Savi, for this, for this introduction. I am audible and visible to you, right? Yeah, both. Okay. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know if it's visible. Is this visible? Yes, see, you can proceed. Okay. So as Savi said, hi, I'm a BDES fourth year student at IIT Guwahati, currently in my final semester. In my third year summer, 2021 summer, I interned remotely as an interaction design intern at DE Shaw India. And shortly after that, I received a pre-placement offer to join them in July 2022 when I graduate. So this talk is about interaction design portfolios and specifically about interaction design portfolios to apply for internships or for jobs, as I have not yet had the experience of doing it to apply for a master's degree. And uh, while these findings can be generally applicable to that context as well. So I'd like to also say that I don't know much about graphic design or industrial design portfolios as I wasn't gearing for those profiles. So this is particularly for interaction design um, portfolios and Vishwa and Prakash will be talking about other such aspects. So um, moving on to the next slide, making a portfolio is a like a big, highly stressful endeavor, especially if there's a deadline in place. It can be pretty stressful, and it was for me. So one thing that helped me throughout the whole process of making a portfolio was to think of this whole internship process or job seeking process or whatever it is as some kind of jigsaw puzzle. So the idea is to find the right fit right now between you as a designer and between wherever it is that you're aspiring towards. So either you fit or you don't, and it says nothing about your uh, competence as a designer. So um, for me, I made my portfolio specifically to apply for internships. And I applied to Disha very specifically because I was interested in that. I felt like that was the place I fit because I was very interested in FinTech and the team structure appealed to me also. It's a small in-house design team with each designer having 100% ownership and accountability over their processes and experiences. Other larger companies like Microsoft, for example, would function differently with bigger teams. But I felt my learning would personally be maximized in the shawl, etc. So why I'm giving this kind of background is to say that I, I made my portfolio with this in mind and I applied with this in mind. So um, it's all about finding that right uh, compatibility. So starting with the portfolio itself. So a portfolio is a design project in itself. The, like probably making a portfolio takes more time than making a design project. So personally, I did struggle a lot with a long project descriptions and I didn't know what to include, what not to include, and I really didn't want to leave much out. So one important thing to remember is that think of it from a user-centered design perspective, like uh, recruiters or whoever it is that is going to look at your portfolio, if it is a recruiter, they may spend 30 seconds of a cab journey on your portfolio. So that is the context in which they're looking at it. That is the lens through which all the design decisions you make have to be verified against. So creating a portfolio is a design project in itself. So moving on. So um, firstly, looking at the platform in which the portfolio can be hosted, I think Emily spoke a bit about this. Uh, Behance is a popular choice, at least among my classmates. Um, it offers you a lot of ease of use, but it comes at a cost of flexibility. Medium and Notion are very good for text-heavy portfolios. And PDFs can be customizable as per the entity you're submitting your portfolio to, depending on what company or whatever it is you're submitting to. And there is the personal website, which is what I chose to go ahead with when I made my portfolio. Right, so I chose a portfolio to, to make my portfolio on a website because it gave me more control over navigation, over project prioritization. And also I wanted to make my portfolio more text heavy. So a website offered me the opportunity to bring in those flavors. So for all these reasons, I chose to build my website. 
So um, in terms of projects and what to include in your portfolio. So again, everything must be very deliberately decided based keeping in mind that the person who's going to actually be taking a look at your portfolio. If it is this recruiter who only has 30 seconds, then that must also be kept in mind. So um, there is no hard and fast rule about the number of projects to include in your portfolio. Typically, what I've seen is between three and 10 projects for entry level designers, but it is really not a hard and fast rule. Um, for example, I had around eight projects prioritized in different categories. And my classmate, another classmate of mine had just one project that he was very confident in and that was a very uh, well thought out project with a lot of with the pro pro process being very strong and that got him hired. So it really there is no hard and fast rule and expert designers having had a lifetime of experience have 20, 30 projects on their portfolios easily. So coming back to this um, pri project prioritization, it's important to front load your portfolio at the project level. Uh, typically try to group your projects, segregate them if you have multiple ones. And uh, also in terms of choosing which project to go into your portfolio, it's important to prioritize those projects I feel that have a good process over and above a good outcome necessarily. So if you feel your process is strong and more importantly, if you feel you are able to describe it eloquently, if you're able to describe the mistakes you went through, etc., the, the process you followed, if that is strong, then that project is something that should definitely go in your portfolio because at the end of the day, you are going to have to present your portfolio to wherever it is that you're applying to. So another thing, to keep in mind about an interaction design portfolio is to keep it very brief and to keep it as consumable as possible. So um, it's important to front load, as I said, at the macro level, structuring off and amongst projects, but also it's important to front load at the micro level, individual paragraphs. So here, highlight text, make it very visually consumable. And this does not mean adding a lot of images or visual elements or colors. It just means cutting out everything that is not essential to the kind of narrative you're trying to give. And it's important to be very specific in what you're trying to emphasize, um, what learning you're trying to emphasize. I'll go more into detail into this later. And if it is painful for you to not include certain details and if you feel it's getting really bulky and you don't have the heart to cut out certain sections, which happen to me a lot, one workaround is to hyperlink those sections for recruiters or whoever it is to take a look at if they feel the need. Um, and here I would like to pause and just reconfirm that I'm audible, Savi. Yes, you're perfectly audible. Thank you. So um, it's important to your portfolio is basically a story. It's a narrative. It is your journey through that project that you're trying to present. So these are some sections that I feel um, make for a good story that are really important to include in a portfolio project, especially an interaction design project. So it's important to sort of summarize your major insights at each section and make that very consumable. Because I know that it can be very text heavy otherwise. Um, it's important to document and clearly state the assumptions you made throughout the process, because if you don't do that, then um, if you state it outright that you have made this assumption, then that kind of acts like a shield against further questions. Um, it's also important to detail out the pros and cons of any decision you took and why, therefore, the pros outweigh the cons in that context for you to go ahead with. This sort of justifies your process and builds your whole narrative in a more strong way. Also, at the end of the project, it's important to state the impact of the project and how it could be measured or how it was measured. Uh, give some uh, quantitative or qualitative uh, metrics to showcase that. And also um, to make it more human and to make it like a story, it's important to uh, uh, detail out gaps in the work that you have done. What you do differently, were you given more time or the chance to redo this project? Basically, it is your critical reflection looking back at the project. And also, uh, it would be nice to add up. I like um, to look at projects where there is a personal touch. And typically, this is what adds that flavor to that particular project. A personal reflection on how this contributed to your growth as a designer and as a professional. Just a couple of sentences that would um, add a lot of character to this particular project. And lastly, it is very important with group projects um, 
to give credit where it is due and to clearly demarcate your specific contribution in that project. Okay. And since you're going to tell it like a story and since um, in the case of applying for internships or applying for jobs, uh, you might have to present your portfolio. It's important to be prepared with uh, presentations for portfolio projects. Know what you're going to say and be prepared with two, five and 10 minute presentations. That is a good kind of set of numbers uh, for all the projects in your portfolio and know which project you would present if the choice was yours, which it likely will be. So it's important to be prepared in this sense. So another thing that helped me was buffer time. So when I made my portfolio, there was a deadline, but I kept a, a, a two week buffer in my timeline for feedback and iteration. And this was very invaluable. Um, I got multiple portfolio reviews from seniors, classmates, peers, people in the industry, etc. And this, of course, made me get thoroughly confused because there was some input that contradicted from different sides. So I prioritized what made sense to me, given my context and what I was looking to get out of this portfolio process and made incremental changes accordingly. So this is really crucial to have that buffer time to get feedback and iterate. So um, reading, right? So personally, for me, something that really helped me throughout my journey is reading. It's um, it's very central to the definition of myself as a person, as a professional, and as a designer. It is my strength, and that is where I come from. But for other people, certainly other activities may be more central to you as a designer, as a professional, something that is sort of relatable to the professional domain. It could be working with people, it could be visual skills, it could be anything. So while approaching your portfolio, it would be great if you can sort of siphon that strength and help that guide you in your process. And it will be especially that much easier if you come from your strength to see if the company or if the university or whatever, if that fits with your goal to come from a place of strength. So, but reading in general, leaving the personal digression aside, reading is, uh, will help you definitely create your portfolio because it will offer you exposure removed from your experience bubble. So I try to read at least one long form article a day uh, here are some articles I've really enjoyed. Um, I will be sharing these slides with uh, Isel afterwards. Um, so these are some I really enjoyed on topics ranging from how to give feedback to your boss to the origin of the high five. Very, very random things, not necessarily core UX uh, pieces. So I try to articulate my critical impressions of these pieces as well. So this kind of regular exposure offers this pickle of possibility and great idea of order for my projects, for my portfolio, for how to present myself, etc. So I would really recommend this. Okay. So here are some resources. Again, I will be sharing these slides. Uh, Cofolios.com is a collection of design portfolios and designers that gives exposure and experience beyond the IIT Gohati bubble. Um, one of this Jeremy Stokes is a particularly amazing portfolio. It's a great example of how to structure your project narratives. I would really recommend going through this. Um, this Udemy course is authored by an IIT Guwahati alumnus. It's completely worth it. It is super comprehensive, insightful, and well-structured. I would recommend going through this in quite a bit of detail, this Udemy course. Um, this degreeless design and this notion page are repositories curated by professionals for entry level and mid level designers. And I find them very lovely to dip into sporadically. Uh, and this RTO Dashinsky solving product design exercises is like a really, it was a godsend for me going through that. Uh, it helped me sort of uh, learn, uh, learn a framework to approach any kind of design problem. And I would say that. The way to approach these, these resources is to just keep dipping into them sporadically throughout the process of making your portfolio, even before you start to after you end. So it's important to, because um, it is hard to absorb more than a little bit at a time, and it's not something that can or will happen all at once. So it's important to allocate time for just absorbing new content, new resources, and um, it, typically may not happen unless that one hour a day or whatever it is, is allocated for it. This is what worked for me. Um, another couple of resources are a couple of articles I wrote on Medium about the internship application process at IIT Guwahati. This is not especially about portfolios, but a lot of what I'm saying derives from these two articles. 
Um, so the first one is about the internship application process itself. And the second one is about my internship experience. Um, working at Disha remotely, so you can check these out if they might help. Um, and lastly, what worked for me may not work for you. So it's really important uh, for me. It was really important to ping many, many different people very relentlessly, contact them to get many different perspectives so that I can mix it into something that does work for me. And it was very important to keep track of all these insights, log my doubts, record different responses, take notes live during calls and meetings and refer to them later. And uh, yeah, to, and then consolidate that as it goes. And um, by pinging people, I mean taking one on one meetings by those with those who are immediately senior to you, as well as those who are much, much senior to you, maybe those who have graduated already or maybe those in the industry, etc. Um, the people who are immediately senior will be able to give you more relevant direct information and probably may have more time to spare for your um, benefit. And people who are much older or much further in their careers would be able to give you a more general picture and broader sense of inspiration. And it's nice to keep in touch with them throughout your journey as a designer, not just for that one help, because uh, to keep track of your work and your growth and just have that connection going. So. People is really important for a portfolio to get feedback, to get inspiration, to get ideas. Yes. So lastly, I would like to reiterate that I know making a portfolio can be stressful. Uh, the whole job seeking process can be really stressful. And um, what worked for me may not work for somebody else and what worked for you may not work for somebody else. So um, especially with reference to internships, I would say it is better to not intern at all than to get an internship that doesn't work for you. So it's really important to find something that works. So this could be anything. Uh, like, for example, my internship really worked well for me because it was a uh, very rigorous 8 to 10 hours of work a day kind of thing. But some of my classmates interned for much less time and that worked really well for them, that 3 to 4 hour commitment because they were able to focus on other projects. So it really depends on what you're working for. Um, what you're looking for and what you're going towards. And this can keep changing along, along the way. So thank you very much. This whole. Um, uh, talk has been an abstraction that breezes over details of my personal experience. So if you'd like to know more details of that or have any discussion on uh, portfolios or UX or whatever it is, I'd be really happy to do feel free to contact me. Um, I'm open for questions if there are any or uh, would move on to Prakash. I'm not sure. Savi, Emily. Yeah. Thank you Dee, for such a great guidance. I hope now you all be very clear about that. And it was when I say as a learner, it was great learning from you. So uh, we will move to the questions now. Uh, please, uh, guys, please place your questions. My phone number, so. Yeah, there's a question from uh, Ananya. Where did you just start the whole process? She's asking. There's a question from Ananya. She's asking, when did you start the whole process? Uh, with reference to internship season. So I do have a. Uh, so I would say that the, if the deadline. Okay, I started the whole process in IIT Guwahati for the internship season in July. Okay. For making my portfolio. So yes, it took me a couple of months. I don't know if that is the question that's being asked, but yeah. Okay. 
Uh, there's a question from Harsh. He's asking where will we be getting the links? Um, I can share these slides with Isel and this can be shared like uh, yeah. of the resources. Okay. So yeah, um, more on Ananya's point, it's important. I felt what really worked for me was to really um, discretize the timeline for myself, saying that I would finish this project uh, documenting this by this time, this by this time, this by this time, and make a large framework before diving into each project. And uh, yeah, it's important to organize your process before making the portfolio itself. So a portfolio is a collation of your work itself. Uh, sorry, I'm taking that question from Samia. Huh, yeah, you can. <laughs> so yeah, a portfolio is a documentation of your work and it's typically much more in detail than your resume. A resume is a one or two page document that's sent out and it has like a small summary of your experiences and your education. Um, yeah, a portfolio is a much more exhaustive documentation in that sense, and it's usually more visual. It actually has examples of the work that has been done. So how much time did it take to make my whole portfolio? Um, counting iterations, etc. I was making it also from scratch, like I had a Behance portfolio, but I changed that completely. It took me around eight weeks. No, you don't have. A, so Ankur is asking if we have to strictly make a niche portfolio or can give works from many different fields. Um, I would say you can totally give work from many different fields. What worked for me is to have a primary section on my website with, with a landing page with the uh, projects that I really wanted to showcase with importance that were interaction design projects. Uh, but then I also had a visual section with a few visual design projects and I had a make section to make a a few projects on tangible industrial design, um, but those were not my priority at that point. So you do not have to stick to making a niche portfolio. It really is great if you have many works from different fields. What did I use to make my website? So um, I used Wix. Uh, they do have good deals going on. So that was a good find. Yeah, and it was very easy to use, but I would recommend uh, coding it if you if you have the time and energy because uh, it locks it Wix locks you into their system and it's a paid service and it, it does not give you as much flexibility and independence as that making one on your own would. Uh, Savi, did you say something? Yeah, what? Did you say something? No, no. Okay. <laughs> But I have cl a class. I think Prakash made his portfolio on Webflow, so maybe he could give a. Right. Is there a recommended limit on the number of projects to have on a portfolio? Uh, no, there is not. Actually, there is no hard and fast rule. Like I said, uh, what I have observed is between three and 10 projects, but you can absolutely go beyond 10 projects, uh, but just make sure to prioritize them accordingly and group them according to how you want to um, people to go through them. Um, and like, if you have a time constraint, then I would say prioritize the projects. You really have a strong process and then it's better than spreading yourself thin. Can we get a link to your website? Yes, you can. My website is actually currently under construction. It is not a updated portfolio, but you're most welcome to look at the ex Yeah, it, like a lot of the projects are under construction. Making a portfolio piece takes decades. Any suggestions to speed up the process? Great. Right. Um, I feel you. It does take a long, long time. It's a very big project. Um, so I would say one thing is to set hard and fast micro deadlines for yourself. Um, and also to work in terms of time rather, in rather than in terms of deliverables to say that I'm going to work for eight hours today rather than I'm going to complete this today. Because I feel uh, the line between working and not working becomes very blurry when you don't set aside that time for it and then your work productivity goes down. So that is one thing. Uh, another thing I would say is prioritize the projects you really want to have on your portfolio. Finish those and then go for the lesser priority ones. Um, also, uh, I could say that if you're really crunched for time, 
it may be uh, okay to have a very uh, to make your portfolio and hyperlink a lot of sections rather than detail them in the portfolio itself hyperlink your actual work did i compile um, all my projects only towards the end or did i compile them as i completed my projects so i did have my projects pretty well documented it's important to document whatever project you're going through in terms of photographs or decisions or keep a log book of sorts as you're going through your projects i didn't do that as well as i should have so making my portfolio was very uh, was a little painstaking in that way so i would really recommend documenting as you go through even if it's just like notes in a book um and then towards the end i compiled it into this portfolio format as such on my website yes thank you so much deep for all such answers thank you so i hope we can proceed further now prakash bhaiya we all are very eager to hear you now please take the command thank you so much for the intro savi uh, and great going pragna uh, enjoyed your talk uh, i'm i'm audible right by the way yes yes yeah all right so i i i'd be honest i'm a little under prepared for the whole talk thing uh some personal commitments uh, uh, but i know i was also traveling but uh, anyway i i have tried my best to compile some uh, and to make a, port a port presentation for the for this talk uh, but um to be frank the um, presentation part would be lesser i would appreciate um a rather a discussion so if you guys can Put up questions. Even in between, we can just take it up. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'll just start sharing my screen. Uh, tell me if you can see my screen. Just confirm. Yes, I it is visible. All right. Thank you. So uh, hi, uh, I am Prakash M Chandra, uh, and first of all, sorry for this very lazy intro page. Like uh, I didn't, I, as I told, I didn't have much time. But um, so um, I am a fourth year right um, Bachelor of Design student, uh, and I had done my uh, first internship with Samson uh, Research and Development Bangalore, uh, the uh, Research Institute Bangalore, basically. Um, I did an online, like the it was work from home basically, and um, I managed to get a PPO, so I'm waiting to go there next next year. So um, my role there was uh, a very um, vague role, I would say it was. Um, so I initially started off my journey design as some in industrial design, and uh, once I started coming to like once I started design as a whole, uh, I started getting into the design process a lot. The design process is uh, a lot. Uh, it, it's a very common thing in every um, design uh, fields that you would say. And um, like uh, it, it, it takes a little time to explain how this works, but uh, this, uh, it's it's unlike uh, every engineering field, which has different different domains, which uh, approaches a problem differently. Design usually approaches a problem in a very um, uh, in, in a very rigid approach. I would say, like it's it's very flexible, but yet it's very rigid. And um, uh, the thinking and the mindset behind each problem solving uh, is sort of uh, very correlatable. Uh, so it's very easy to be explorative in design, especially in your bachelor's. Uh, so I was trying that out and then uh, I applied uh, to Samsung, uh, which was predominantly a UX company, but I was, which was excelling in industrial uh, more, but, uh, and I ended up doing something of AR sort. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a different experience altogether. It was sort of an AR plus UX uh, experience. Uh, I had fun doing the internship, and um, once my internship was over, they contacted me for uh, they offered me a, a placement there, and uh, I was very much happy to accept that because uh, I had real fun there doing the internship. Uh, 
So um, I'm gonna be talking about uh, design as a process and uh, design as a research, just as an intro, just to give you the context of um, how, so I, I've been asked to talk a little about design research too, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is what I've been doing more in Samsung and also in my portfolios. So um, I'm going to be using this word a lot, design, design, design. You, you'll hear this a lot, uh, so don't be bored. Uh, and so um, initially, um, design as a process, as I said, is a very, um, it's, it's, a, it's something um, which is very common all throughout all the design fields, etc. And uh, the way you think for design um, is a very logical process, basically. It's, it's not a hard and fast scientific thing or anything. It's, it's just that you are um, starting to see a problem and you're just trying to solve it. And in order to understand the problem, uh, you need to uh, study the problem understand it deeper you need to explore the vastness of the problem and then uh, somehow make it um, somehow analyze all your learnings about the problem and then uh, from there uh, you take a very unconventional approach to solving that problem uh, and uh, this is the and th this is exactly what design thinking is basically and um, a major part of it about the first part, which I told you right now, and not the unconventional solving part, uh, uh, is about the design research. Now, uh, design research is a little different from the whole uh, PhD research or like uh, the major user research that comes in. Design research is much more specific and much more uh, niche, I would say. Um, because it has uh, design research is not about just exploring it's exploring for a reason like you're exploring based on a problem so and you in design research uh, it's it's much more focused I would say. that's the right word focus and um, you would try to find um, various problems various um, insights uh, by doing a lot of things like a literature review, uh, a user interviews, uh, you could do uh, like there are multiple ways to do research. There's something called contextual inquiry, which uh, I'm not going to take a lecture on the user research methods, but um, there are multiple ways to do a reason do user research, and uh, there is this part where you analyze or compile all these learnings that you've had you've had from the, this research and um, you sort of find some learnings and insights uh, or pointers on which you will start designing. Sometimes when you approach a problem, you won't be, um, you won't be solving uh, the problem directly. Uh, you would be solving something else which affects this problem and then the problem gets solved. So there are multiple ways. But anyway, um, the Point being, uh, I, I just gave this whole context to you to understand what design research is and um, how it would work. Uh, in terms of portfolio, design research is uh, again having the same rules as uh, any other portfolio part. So um, whatever uh, project that you're showing, um, you'd be showing the research part. And uh, there is this, uh, this famous way of the, like the double diamond process. There are multiple types of processes, but I, uh, no set of rules, I say. But uh, I um, some few pointers which make sense for portfolio and as well as uh, the research part of the design or being a design researcher, maybe. And many of the points were very well uh, told by Pragnya too. And I think uh, there might be a lot of overlap uh, but the first is there are no set of rules for um, for a portfolio per se. Um, there really no set of rules. Like you can be as explorative as you want, and uh, there wouldn't be any issue. Like um, someone made a game as a portfolio. Someone made someone can make like a like a where you, you can do it as a book and anything. Um, the purpose of the portfolio, like Emily mentioned in the uh, in the first that presentation, uh, is to basically showcase your works. 
there there's a certain purpose for the portfolio but how you do your portfolio it definitely depends on you your personality your works etc and it's not uh, and there are no proper set of rules as long as you have a justification or a justification or a logic on why you did that or um, you have a, you have some points on which you decided these things i think you're good to go uh, like you're good to go ahead with whatever kind of portfolio you want um so uh, but the major point is the portfolio still remains the same so portfolio is majorly about your journey and um, what i meant by your journey is that um, it need not be uh, th- there is no uh, specific set of things that you need to do in a portfolio um whatever uh for a project so portfolio is just a reflection of your project by the way it's not it's not the project by itself so you might have done a two month long project and um you are compiling all this whole journey into let's say a sheet now let's say like like i'm just going to talk about behance for now like behance, let's as an example so if i'm talking about behance um it's it's a continuous sheet it's like a mini website uh, which is a static mini website in behance so um you need to um make it as that uh, it's continuously scrollable but the person gets to experience your journey uh, what whatever you went through at that point whatever is necessary for that you need to figure out that and uh, put it up in a portfolio and that is a successful portfolio i would say uh, that's how i would define uh, a successful portfolio uh, portfolio is not uh, uh it's it's not an ad for your product or it's not an ad for your um uh your work that you did it's uh, you're not selling your work uh, you're selling yourself basically so it's not about your final product portfolio mainly focuses about the whole process that you went through the, about the product so um make sure it so i have seen a lot of um portfolios which are very good looking which talks about the final product but um especially in uh, in case where you are a um, college student who is applying to jobs or internships um uh, people care more about your process per se uh secondly uh, portfolio is about communication um and this is a very very important point uh, i would say because um so in uh, as as i already mentioned it's it's a lot about your journey but how you showcase it's a lot so uh, it depends a lot on yourself and um if you can communicate your journey properly then uh, that is the best portfolio that you can that you can get like so um and by communication uh, it need not just be like the verbal or textual communication it can be many other things it can be a video it can be um something to experience like a game it can be it can be many other things like it can be um like uh, it it could be visual communication too usually in in we prefer uh, visual communication over a textual communication or uh, like a verbal communication uh, communication might not be possible verbal communication is debut thing uh, textual communication is uh, and uh, visual communication is the easiest way to uh, express or communicate wish to show i will show some examples on what i meant by visual communication later on um i'll just go through what i did so that is that and then so and also reflection uh it not communicates your process or your way uh it is also about what you learned from uh the whole process so um this uh important quality that you need to show you uh is that you is is what you from the whole tenure of doing a project or what you've learned from a project uh the learnings the reflection uh the whole project matters a lot then uh, portfolio is also about expression um now what i meant by expression is that um 
so designer or as as a person i'd say like um a portfolio is um the image that or, or the the first impression that people are going to have about you uh, as a designer you won't be meeting everyone uh, per se and um, this is the first thing that people are going to see uh, uh, the for, for the designer identity of yours uh, i mean i don't care how good of a person you are or how bad of a person you are uh, as a designer um, you are showcasing a specific skill set a specific um, uh, a personality uh, of yourself and the portfolio should or portfolio could show it um and so this is why a person uh, people would prefer like a website over uh, something like a templated uh, behance or something maybe uh, but even behance can pull off a great job uh, if if you can do it in the right way if you can express your uh, identity through it uh if you look at my portfolio if you look at um, pragnya's portfolio and vishwas portfolio you'll see three different kind of portfolio altogether and it's not that one is better than the other or one is worse than the other it's just that three are totally different ones it's uh, you can't compare all three of them many a times uh, uh like it, uh, there is no right or wrong thing to do there as, as well uh the only wrong thing that a portfolio can do is that the the reader cannot understand what you went through so if the purpose of the portfolio is done then i think that's obviously the right thing to do um so it's it's a lot about expression self expression or how you showcase yourself so the visual identity the kind of colors that you use the way that you do the kind of fonts that you use in in a visual um and uh, like there are multiple factors which affect this so uh, try to make a portfolio this is like a honest suggestion i'll say like an advice that try to make your portfolio as unique as possible uh, and it should uh, it it should stand out and it should showcase yourself basically um then the sixth point is uh, i think pragna also mentioned about this portfolio in itself is a design basically uh sometimes and many a times portfolio requires equal or even more amount of effort that you put into a project so it is like a design project you are designing uh something just give me a second just connecting my charger yeah um you are designing something of its own so portfolio is usually um like i said the whole process that you go through for design like doing a little bit of research and then coming up with certain ideas to solve a problem or do uh, or solve a purpose portfolio also has a purpose portfolio has multiple solve that purpose or um or fulfill that purpose and um, you are a designer who is designing your own portfolio so um it's a uh, it's a very uh, i don't know how to put it right there in words um because you are uh, you are showcasing your works for people um from outside who are going to be reading your work so um the essentially the reader is being treated as like a user of your portfolio if your portfolio was a product your the person who's reading it the reader could be a random person who's going through your portfolio or uh, your friends your family or also the uh, interviewer or the company who is going through your portfolio so all of these people are going to be there so um while essentially when you do a portfolio for uh, a job you consider all three of them like uh, more than and you basically weigh the companies or the uh, hr persons or uh, the designers from a company the industry etc all those people as the major targeted users for your portfolio so um you will design your portfolio in such a way their experience of go is the best so um would be it so i'll just go through how did i do my portfolio i i do have time right just to like go through the put put some time i put some pointers savvy yes bhaiya yeah, you can do that okay okay yeah so this is basically the end of my presentation i'll just move into my portfolio uh this is a 
less updated portfolio per se uh, because i got a ppo i didn't update my portfolio so sorry for that but um, this is what got me an internship in Sam- in samson so i just uh, tell you uh, tell you the uh, tell you what i did for the projects so um, initially so this was primarily the main project samson got me uh, samson was to see my yeah yeah so uh, in this project if you look at it uh, this is this is the format that i'm saying uh, in base very continuous thing to go about like you can uh, scroll it through so it's not it's and it's very different from something like i did right now which is like a pager so um, if you actually uh, let me just show you this one ka the uh, last one so there are multiple ways to uh, show this so this one is isu isu is like a so i tried bring my whole book. so if someone's going through it he can so the kind of uh, design that you showcase for this would be totally different uh, uh, i sort of got all of these things from here and i made a different presentation for behance which is this and this is a cut down version so um like i said people uh, visiting this would be friends and most importantly uh, the the people from the company so uh, a, the primary point that i've been hearing from my seniors is that they would not spend time on your portfolios uh, they will they have a lot of stuff to do they have a, they have 100 portfolios to go through so they won't go in detail through each and every portfolio so um, i had to very very obvious for them i had to make it very easy for my portfolio so that was the aim of uh, my projects when i created my uh, portfolio so um, so es- essentially if i make like a very big paragraph over here um, i'll be certain that they are not going to read it and if they don't read that then uh, probably they won't understand what the project is about so i tried uh, certain visual aspects such as like this one this is idea from like this like putting on to your face like uh, so you don't have to f- go and find uh, what this thing is about like i'm i'm just putting it right there this is idea from uh, and uh coming to the research part now this is the research part i've been talking about so um in uh research like i said uh this is re- research is a huge part of the design process and um in the design process like i said there is no hard and fast rule uh if you have seen the double diamond process this is i don't know what this thing is but this is what i did like i am naming it something like a wave wave process maybe i don't know like i've never named it uh, but this is what i went through while doing the research and while doing the process so um what happened is during uh, the research phase of it i didn't really know how to approach it so i just started off with a basic head start and then i went into the user so i i kept on going from user to product and user to product as redesigning up and an actual i went and talked to the user and whatever i got from the user i tried applying it to the product i studied the product and whatever i tried out with the product i again went into the user then i studied the user's perspective of that, those points then i went in, again to the product and then i tried the hands on then user product as i said um this is not a very well defined uh, thing that is there in uh, out there actually uh, you could consider this a sort of contextual inquiry as a whole but um, this was um, this was the overall process that i took so the first step that i did in my portfolio was to represent this whole process so i wanted to showcase um, what i did for my research so this was a basic way to show that huh, like th- this is what i did like i had a head start i went to the user then basic user interface in sorry in in uh, inference and then product then product study then user then user study so people get an idea on 
how how i went to this so this is just an overall process i am not going to explain this whole thing in a small portfolio because it's redundant uh then uh, i got the inference so this inferences is what i got from the research and this is the most important part of a research like i um so th- this is also very obviously written there there are three products and these are the issues and this is the major product breakdown and uh, these are the that i had in my finger and what i did for the hands on and what all problems did i select so uh, i was trying the my aim here this was not the perfect presentation but my aim here was to uh, showcase what exactly i was focusing on in this one and then i had like uh, some random ideation conspiration why i chose one design uh, then this is the working of my idea like what exactly was the idea so i was just telling that the idea is very simple and uh, i explained what this is and these are like details so all of these visual things uh, etc all of the all of those things was to just to make people understand even without much text uh and then um uh, and then this part is basically the final product presentation like uh like i i told you okay. and then uh, how all all of these things like what the whole product is how does the actual product look by the end of it so um and uh so this was one presentation now if you go through this presentation when you have time like just go through it maybe uh, you'll understand uh, this is a whole story by itself like i'm i'm not trying to explain uh, any specific part by part this is just the journey that i went through and the kind of colors that i'm using the kind of fonts that i'm using and if you look at my portfolio i will have all of the projects starting like this all of the presentation starting like this so this is kind of my thing that i do uh, if you look at vishwas presentation style it might be different uh, if you look at pragnes it might be different and all of those people will have different different uh, way of presenting uh, similarly discovery we all uh, like uh, i'm when i talked about communicating in uh, like uh, portfolios about communication uh, the visual communication or you can choose your way of communication one thing that i liked about my portfolio was this one uh, so i wanted to show um, the problem that um, sometimes when you uh, okay l- i'm just stating it like this that sometimes when you actually search for something uh, that you have in mind but you're not able to express it or you're not able to um, so in terms of music uh, i wanted some something like a rock wala vibe but also something like a something fast something slow uh, but something like uh, I, i have something in mind but i'm not able to express it how will i put this in a paragraph it's very hard to put this in a paragraph and if i did put that in a paragraph uh, people would probably not go through it so what is the best way to show uh, what the problem so i did this few brainstorm for how can i actually show what this is very very important because um this is the first part of the design process like understand so uh, w- when i am saying uh, i know what the problem is and my team members knew what the problem is because we worked on the project but when i'm explaining it to someone else i can verbally explain it to you guys right now but um someone else visually in in, in a presentation where i am not present i need to make sure that the problem is rightly understood by the reader so i tried making this thing where uh, i just put up the reason searches like so you you'll understand this this is a situation that i'm showing ki i've searched rock pop rockish i'm trying to do and i'm frustrated at the end and i've asked you have you felt this where you couldn't find the right jam so this sort of gives them an idea this sort of makes it relatable for them and gives them an idea of what the problem is without actually stating the problem per se and then i went in through like the whole thing like this is again the process when you when you have time just go through this again like you'll understand this has a completely different process by the way from the previous project that you saw this has um 
different types of different kind of research this had uh, different kind of insights this we what we did with those insights were also totally different we made a target user group map uh, and we had keywords to basically um, key characteristics to which to which we should have fulfilled etc so the approach that i took for this is totally different but the important part is how would you showcase this uh, then so yeah um, then so some other project like this was a totally industrial design project where i made something so the kind of uh, process that i'm showing for this would be totally different so i so this is one this is the thing that i learned from this like gibson's affordance theory so this was a part of our course and i had to show key i so what exactly this gibson's affordance theory is and what did i do for all these things so i so in this one research was not even present like this was not a research based project this was an explorative design project so i started off with the ideation altogether and why i chose so all of these th these are the deciding factors i had all of these form, uh, forms why i chose this and what did i do with that form how did i make it in the 3d how did i render it and what are the prototyping this things like uh, all of these uh, minimal things but um, which matters so uh, a portfolio to just end of my talk i'll just stop sharing the screen uh, yeah. Yeah, so a portfolio um, is basically uh, like the pointers that I mentioned, there are no set of rules. It's about communicating your journey uh, and your self-expression and your learnings in a very visual, in a very documentative way. Uh, and uh, there, uh, when we talk about a portfolio workshop or a portfolio talk, we usually uh, mention about the minor, minor details uh, because it's easy to um, it's easy to showcase or it's easy to just put it put my project out there and assume that the person will understand it. But um, the challenging things that comes into play is about very, very minor things like uh, it's like many a times uh, the colors matter. Many a times uh, how uh, the order or the layout of the uh, presentation matters like what comes first what comes second etc it's basically like a story where you actually um, try to curate it in uh, and it's very intricately curated actually where you need to sit down uh, maybe uh, like uh, what i usually do is i have a sketchbook and i usually like note down points what order should i go for like Pele, I'll start off with the problem. How will I show the problem? And once the person understands the problem, what what should I tell next? What should I show next? Like, um, should I directly go to the research? Uh, in my uh, null case, I directly went to the research, but uh, in my the disk that you show, uh, I explained what the product is. And then I went into the research justifying what I did for the product. So I said, Ki, I went to the research, why I did this, why I did that, why I did this, etc. So it's a lot of decisions that you take and the justifications and uh, the kind of um, story that you go through. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the reader, uh, the person who goes through your portfolio needs to understand what you went through at that time and what, uh, and what, why you did certain things in certain way and uh, that is exactly what makes uh, that 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 is what a portfolio is and that is the whole purpose of a portfolio i'd say i think i just stop here uh, i didn't really make even a script i'm just going on sorry i think is this fine yes i am all right thank you it was a little underprepared and I tried making a lot of this thing, but to have some questions, if you guys have. Um, yes, so yeah, there's a question from Ankur asking, what type of questions are the like of the interviewers after the portfolios are selected? What type of questions are the like of the interviewers as in? Ankur? Hmm? 
like uh, what type of questions would they ask is what, what you're asking or um... okay yeah uh, what questions they ask generally okay. in so an interview it can go either way like the interview, there is a session where sec, uh, explain your portfolio or some projects in your portfolio so in that case um so even for my interview they were asking can you take one project uh so that is the first thing that they would um, ask based on portfolio they can ask many other questions too uh, which i am not going into detail because you can't really predict and it depends on the company as well like why would you like with us uh, what do you know about this company etc uh, but based on the portfolio they can ask specific questions about the portfolio uh, when they tell you to go through one project uh, you basically uh, go through the portfolio basically go through the project um, they can ask you whatever they feel like at that point there's no uh, there is no uh, proper sort of questions i feel uh, based on portfolio that they can ask uh, the all of these questions that they ask would generally revolve around your decisions on why you did certain things certain way um like for example um when i went through uh, when uh, after my ideation let's say i had four ideas uh, which i finalized and i went with one particular idea which i liked uh, so uh, the, the interviewer can ask why did you choose that particular one when the other things also had the same functionality so you should have an answer for why you actually chose that uh, it could be also based on the presentation when they don't understand like um, like um, let's say um, i i had uh, given some feedback for some other's presentation where uh, they explained the product ka some uh, they used something from the art Uh, some form of art pehle so i uh, i was confused as to why did they choose that particular form of art like uh, there are millions of kind of arts but what made them choose that particular uh, type of art to use in a product so um, this is th these are genuine things that people think through like um, You, you need to be able to you just need to be clear on your design decisions basically there is uh, so in design there is nothing that you just do for the sake of it like there is a reason behind every decision that you take so uh, maybe you, you're not thinking about the reason many a times but uh, if you think hard enough there would be uh, a decision uh, a reason why that decision came into play uh, i'm not getting a good example also right now but i hope that answered your question like it's more about the more about what you did basically in terms of portfolios from chandan when you're focusing your portfolio towards clients um how much research the ideal amount to show that's actually a good question you know Um, mm that's actually a good question so a client based portfolio would be a little different i would say um because um generally if you're getting if you're trying to get hired for a for the process but a client based thing would be the end product so um it's more so with so um a client is not a designer and um uh see your uh, what what do you say like whatever thought process that you put in through like he cares more about what he gets out of you and those are the the fitness of the work uh, that you put out uh, the kind of um the kind of output that you produce etc uh and the skill set that you also have for the output like uh, like let's say a person who knows how to make 3d can showcase his skills like that um then um 
so that is one major aspect of it but uh, that shouldn't restrict you from putting the whole um, the, the whole uh, what do you say the research part of it too uh, because okay so your goal is not just to make it like research need not be boring at all the times also you know that right uh, many a times uh, let's say um, you're designing a product people in general would also be interested to knowing why the product came into existence so um, there is a reason why you created that product any day uh, what you can do is make your presentation appealable visually as well uh, so w- while so i have worked for sort of like a client uh, with all this research in place but um, the only thing that Uh, i was i was trying to make sure is that when he goes through the research he doesn't get bored of it it's not text uh, he can quickly go through it and understand that i have did this 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 and this is from this point i have reached this because of this so um, that that is the whole point of the portfolio right you you basically showcasing the work in some way um, it could be uh, okay so he has asked okay he has a very big test okay i have a text how, how do we make it come effective enough changes in you when you don't have a large user base for testing testing is a completely different part uh, i don't think you should be go i, I mean if you can that's great but uh, testing requires a lot of time and resource and generally in um, in a college project people don't expect testing as much because um it requires uh, a lot of time if you can do that then that's actually great if you if you have done that put that in the portfolio too i would say um i mean the effectiveness of changes yeah so so that is one thing. like uh, the effectiveness of changes also um even without testing you can say the speculated effects of the change like why you designed it and what are you speculating the changes to be uh let me tell you this very clearly that whatever you design might not be 100% workable and it's fine to have that so um sometimes like i have designed the product called nul uh, and i have uh, i i did it in an online semester uh, and i ca- i couldn't even make a physical prototype of that so i whatever i did there i don't know if it will work or not and uh maybe if i go into testing i'm sure that there will be a lot of problems with that product uh in order to find those problems in an industry uh there is uh, a proper testing there is proper prototyping etc uh, which unfortunately for this project i couldn't do and that is a major drawback of that product like i uh, i don't know if those things will work uh but as um as a, uh, th- i did that for my second year project so as a third year right who's just into design uh more than a workable f- uh, project of its own every project will have uh, some problems let's say so uh, more than a workable project um it's about um the approach that you took to make something new and um the possibility of that working is there still like i have a proper justification on why that product will work uh till now i haven't tested it so i don't know if it will actually work but i am speculating that it will work so um it's fine to have uh, not the user testing part also uh, right now in this level uh, once you go into the industry you learn a lot of things differently uh, when i went to my samsung's uh, internship thingy uh, i uh i had to make my um, so I, i couldn't speculate as much as as i thought i could uh there were some user tests that was conducted there were uh, some um uh, the the kind of research that you do also changes because um, what the industry demands in a very uh, high profile company would be different from what uh, a studio would demand from you and that would be totally different from the what, what the college would demand from you so it's it depends on the context uh then um, 
the problem is only showing the end product is we would be limiting our potential and clients do know things about design and would like to see the process yes uh that is true i think i already told told about that research need not be boring high end clients um so it depends a lot on the uh, client per se uh i'm not saying that the process for a client is not important uh, i'm just saying that um the end product for a client is more important uh, when compared to someone uh, from the industry because um because a client's purpose or client what the client's intention of hiring a designer is to design something for him uh, whereas uh, a designer who is hiring you is uh, looking forward to working with you so there's a difference there i think that i hope that answered about uh, he basically asked about two things about user testing and the effectiveness of the design and the uh yeah the client wala part i i i feel like um maybe vishwa can give you a better answer for the client wala this thing because uh, vishwa has worked with more clients chandan yeah like you can ask a question about ux2 i'm not very well versed in like even design i would say uh, i'm still a student just your senior so <laughs> don't expect like a high level answer but uh, i all three of us are there like if i don't know pragna would probably answer a visual there so you can you can ask a question about anything there how do we come up with a unique layout for something pragna would you like to look at that hello uh, unique layout in the sense of Okay. You, I, I, I also didn't like. Can you be more specific? Uh, can you be more? Can you elaborate on it more? Like, what, what? And why is the? Yeah, and why are you looking for uniqueness? Yeah, like what? What? What are you trying to do? ओके सो चंदन पहले कूल माय अप्रोच टू दिस इन यूएक्स देयर आर टू थिंग्स इफ सो यू आर डिजाइनिंग सम सेक्शन यू वांट टू स्टैंड आउट फ्रॉम द वेबसाइट ऑफ द सेम सेक्शन एंड द कंटेंट मैट बी द सेम लाइक यू सेड बट द लेआउट कुड हैव अ पर्पस एंड if you are making a unique layout i would suggest uh what ha, i would suggest there being a purpose for that unique layout um can i ask you back what why would you require a unique layout helpful to have a unique layout but in what way yeah yeah please i think you know what um, if if you have like a very specific thing you can actually contact me like let's have a uh discussion i would love to do that uh that's fine uh you can mail me or even text me like i think uh these people easel might give you my contact uh yeah cool that that'd be cool then is there anyone else with any questions like this i'm scared now <laughs> thank you chantan so i guess we can move forward now sure all right i'll just stop my video vishwa please go ahead thank you so much uh, bhaiya for your kind words it was a pleasure to learn from you your rules will definitely help us throughout so i hope now you all are very excited to hear our third speaker vishwa prasanna bhaiya i am delighted to have you please bhaiya Hi, it's Lord Savi. Can you just confirm if I'm audible? Yes, Maya, you are both audible and visible. Awesome. Thanks a lot. 
So I think there is nothing much for me to cover because Pragna and Prakash, both of them have done a really wonderful job in, you know, taking you all through like the entire process that they followed, that uh, the tips and tricks that they used, that they felt that was useful for, you know, making their portfolio in their entire journey through this, these four years in design. So I'll try to fill up a few gaps that I felt that I could, you know, make some sense of. So I'll just go ahead and share my screen. So I am at the moment uh, making the assumption that, uh, just hold on a second. Huh. At the moment I'm making the assumption that the people here are like a mixture of people who are pursuing design from this college, from IIT Guwahati and from other colleges. And there'll be people who are not pursuing design at the moment, as in they have a separate degree, another degree that they're pursuing, but are interested in design and want to break into this field. And also there'll be people who have been studying here, but they have sort of never made a portfolio in life. So I'll try to basically address all these, uh, like the, the possible issues that you might face uh, if you are belonging to either of either of these categories that I mentioned. So, yep. Yes, so is my screen visible? Yes, I am. Awesome. Right. So, what exactly is industrial design? So, Pragna talked about interaction design, Prakash talked about research and design. He did touch upon a few, uh, on industrial design a few times. So would you guys like to take a guess on what exactly industrial design is? Like in the chat box, you can just go ahead and quickly type like the first few things that come to your mind. Let me just pull out the chat box. Okay. So Hardika says physical products. So uh, let me just ask you like directly out here. So how many of you are uh, like put, trying to pursue industrial design as a future in design? So you can just. Just say plus one and I'll probably have a better idea as to how to take this forward. Right, so it's three people as of now. Nice. So nonetheless, this is somewhat of an expected number because like especially in our country, the percentage of people pursuing industrial design is very less because the scope is rather limited since the companies, all of them, they require people from industrial design backgrounds to have experience when they are first hired. So that makes it a bit of a challenge for people to break in into the new domain of industrial design among like the other existing domains of design. So industrial design is basically like Hardika had said that it's, it's, it has to do with physical products. It has to do with tangible products and the interactions, the materials, and basically start to finish the entire experience that a tangible product uh, brings to the user is industrial design. So if, <clears throat> if I talk about uh, UX, UX in the traditional sense means the user experience. So industrial products, like a physical product, for example, this phone, the UX of this phone is also part of industrial design, though UX, uh, like strictly speaking in the terms that are currently used in the industry, it means something to do with a digital product or like a tangible interface where like the UX is usually concerned with the digital component of the entire product. So in this case, it means uh, like in the industrial design sense, it means that how exactly your user is going to interact with your product and how exactly is the user going to uh, feel when they hold your product and use it. 
so so when it comes to industrial design or in general any any portfolio for any any design role that you are applying for how exactly do you make your portfolio where exactly do you get your projects from so firstly you should not be stealing your projects so stealing any way isn't a good good thing because it doesn't lead to i mean it doesn't lead to any ownership of the work that you have done so for example if you steal someone's idea if you don't have that passion that backs any other project that is your own that you do so if you if you look at any any good project any good portfolio it will have projects that start off with problems that are close to uh, the person who made the portfolio uska heart so for example my portfolio i started off the problem that was very very close to me because that is the first time i was doing like a large scale project and i wanted to be sort of comfortable in the area that i was exploring into so usually how you start off with a portfolio or start off making projects is you start with something that you're familiar with so once you move ahead in that direction you tend to be more comfortable with the skills you develop so you have one thing that is tethering you to your comfort zone and you're exploring in one direction once you are comfortable with that you sort of move away from what you're comfortable with as a problem space or something that you want to solve for and then that is how you further develop your uh, all your necessary senses all your necessary sensitivities for design <clears throat> so you start off at some place some place that you know and then you branch out into different domains i'm sure pragna also started off with like her first problem as something that she was very familiar with something that frustrated her or something that she she strongly felt like solving i'm sure prakash also found a problem that was close to him that was easy for him to understand and create something to solve for so that's how all of our portfolio journeys or project journeys begin so you start with something you know and then move to the unknown so another set of things that you can actually make projects out of is your assignments so if you are uh, currently studying in design how you can go about it is use the assignments that uh, you get as part of your curriculum and go a bit extra go the extra mile put in some extra effort to complete that so for example you have an assignment that asks you to uh, use a certain concept uh, and show how you can practically apply it why not just start with a problem statement and then move forward in the design process and use this concept so you are basically creating an entire story out of one variable that you are already given so that assignment is your variable and you are just following the entire process and stringing it through the assignment and creating an entire project out of it so if you are new and trying to break into the field you can again you can look at common problems that we, people face and the first uh, suggestion is any day uh, it will any day hold true take something close to your heart and try to solve it so how exactly will you make your portfolio again it's the assignments it is the different uh, problems that you face that you try to solve the one good way of uh, making more projects is doing it as a group so if you have someone else to motivate you and you will also be uh, ending up motivating them and it sort of is like a group uh, undertaking that you have accountability so you don't feel like you're alone and lost so like pragna prakash both of them have mentioned earlier that there are tons of resources available online as to get ideas as to how to make a portfolio as to how to go ahead with any project so coming to the uh, crux of this presentation how did i make my portfolio so if you might have noticed i had mentioned before that stealing is not good but it's also one of the most powerful tools for a designer to develop his skill set for a designer to develop his own language for a designer to develop his own identity so how exactly do you learn how to play cricket how exactly do you learn how to play badminton you look at someone you see what they're doing you see oh they did this it works oh they did this it works now i'll try doing this oh for me if i do something slightly different it works much better so that that is the entire process of developing your skill i am not telling you to copy projects as is that is wrong that is any day wrong all i'm saying is try to copy their process all i'm saying is try to copy their thought process behind uh, behind solving the problem 
So if you just open Behance, find tons of tons of projects. Just search for industrial design. We can filter it across different institutes. You can filter it across different uh, locations in the world. Each location in the world will have a specific design language. Each location, uh, like each institute, will have a specific design language. If you if you search for uh, IIT Guwahati in Be uh, in Behance, you'll find people's works with almost a similar type of flow. So you'll have the double diamond process. You'll have uh, you know the brief that is uh, spelled out. Like all of like Prakash mentioned, it is a rigid yet flexible uh, journey that you take in design. So when you when you look at all these different uh, different works of all these people, you get to understand what exactly have they done or what is it that is appealing to you. So when I started off with my uh, presentations, I used to see okay, so there are these templates. I used to open up um, what is that Canva, and then I used to see all these templates. So I used to see okay, which templates do I like? Why is it that that I like these templates? Okay. What can I do that will, you know, uh, encapsulate what I am as a person or I am as a designer? For me, I like to keep my presentations very minimal, and I like to do the uh, I like to let the word work do the talking. If at all someone wants to understand a bit more, I like to keep it minimal without any distractions. So I like to write succinct text and basically intersperse it with different images, different visuals. So that even if you are scrolling through it at a 30 second per presentation pace, you can still uh, you know take in all the important parts, important steps in the process. And if you want to leisurely scroll through reading everything and trying to understand the, the process, the thought process behind everything, you can still do that. So stealing things from other people is very important, especially when you want to start to learn things and start to make make your presentations. Projects steal the thought process, not your, not their solution. That is the most important thing when it comes to creating new projects and having new ideas for different flows. So I will just go ahead and at this point, if there is any questions, you can just drop it in the chat box. I will answer it. <clears throat> right. So, um, like uh, both Prakash and Pragya mentioned that Behance is not the only way in which you can, uh, you know, show your portfolio or compile your work. You can have a website, you can have a proper PDF, you can have a physical book, you can, you can, you can actually make videos of yourself also explaining your project. It's just your imagination is the limit. So when it comes to applying for uh, uh, applying for a particular role inside your college as part of your placements, it becomes important to have, I mean, I personally feel that it becomes important to have a certain uniformity across all, all, all portfolios. In the sense, if half the people's portfolios are on a website, half the people's portfolios are on Behance, it becomes sort of difficult for the person who's viewing because again, a website offers a lot more uh, customizability and you can have a lot more different interactions. So cognitively, if you think for each particular portfolio, it's a different set of interactions or a different set of things that a person is looking at. For a website, you might have like a collapsible drop down with the different options. You might have a link that takes you somewhere else or whatever, something specific to that website. And on the other hand, you have something like Behance, which sort of limits you in, in a certain constrained environment, but it helps you maintain that uniformity across different people and your different projects. So I personally prefer, I preferred Behance since many of the uh, people in my class, they did have a Behance account and they made all their work on Behance. And since it's one of the simplest things to do, you don't have to think too much about 
you know how each element will be placed or how your presentation will be because the editing tools in behance is pretty powerful so okay another thing when you're making your uh, portfolio it should be clearly visible as to what what are the different projects that you have done and it should be in in such a way that you know the person who is looking at your portfolio is inclined to click into a certain project for example the, the thumbnail of each project is very important i feel because that will decide which project the the person who is seeing your portfolio will go into for example i like this so i click into this and i go in so that is going to be like a basic you know walk through of the thought process of a person who is going to look at your portfolio that aside once they go into your project it's going to be uh, basically how how you're showing your work and what are the keywords that they're looking for so you have a background here you have the brief you have the user study you have your ideation all of these are backed by images all of these are backed by enough breathing room so that it doesn't look too cluttered so if i'm scrolling through this i can see that my eyes go toward this this image this bold text so this is basically something that is very uh, as for me to my liking it's very minimal it does not have too much going on the focus is primarily on the images the focus is primarily on something that is expressive and shows you know what i have done so when it comes to industrial design an important thing is prototyping prototyping your understanding of materials so this was my first ever project like a large scale project that i had made so i played the mridangam and i had uh, like there are many problems in that particular sphere like carrying this heavy instrument through airport is is like a big big problem so since i was very close to it i was able to understand the problem clearly i was able to understand which direction i can choose to you know design or solve for the problem so it it was pretty much like a starting point for me to explore how to how to design so you go ahead with ideating on what are the possible uh, solutions to the problems you identify then it's basically adding more and more detail till you are more or less satisfied so once once you're satisfied with a concept you go ahead and test it out by making prototypes so this was basically during uh, the start of covid when we were sent back home and whatever was available at home i tried to use them to you know make some prototypes it's a very basic common sense wala process i mean but again we can't just say that ha common sense se kar diya maine sab to it doesn't make sense that way that's why there are a few terminologies that people look for so like prototyping is one material uh, material uh, color material finish is one then there is ideation then there is user study then there is brief all of these are basic common sense steps that you take to solve a problem but instead of calling it as common sense it is making it easier to understand and easier for the person reading to understand our thought process so there is no hard and fast rule again it is just what works for you and what you feel will express your work the best one other important thing that i feel that is uh, like essential for any uh, any portfolio is consistency consistency across the type of presentations that you are making so initially as a starter i feel it is fine if you don't have that consistency because you are again figuring out your style but once you have figured out what works for you it becomes easier to you know have projects with consistent styles so for example this way of writing a huge heading with a bold uh, topic and some text bold topic and some text there'll be a few images gifs whatever all of them cut across by a few topics and written words so again 
yeah, at the end of the day, it's trial and error. You figure out what works for you and you basically showcase what you are as a designer. So I feel that that's about it from my side. So if there are any questions, please kindly mention it in the chat box. I'll try to take it up and answer it as briefly as I can. I know it's been quite a long session, almost two hours. Seems that there are no questions. Nice. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, Bhaiya, for enlightening us with your knowledge and experience. It was my honor to hear you. Thank you so much. Anytime. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. Before we leave, ESET IIT Guwahati brings B Frame UI UX Design Hackathon in partnership with Whitespace. It's a great, great platform to showcase your creativity and design learning, where you all will be provided with real life problem statements. And there are many goodies waiting for you. And the registrations are live, so please go and register. There's something again exciting waiting for you guys. Wanna have a look? So, Yashwan Bhaiya, please make us aware with that. Visible? Yes, the yeah, is perfectly visible. Yeah, so hi guys. Uh, I hope you have gained some decent insight on how to build a portfolio and uh, are ready to kickstart your design journey. So, what better than an intern could you do to build a client based portfolio piece? With over 60 plus startups and 65 plus design roles available, intern fair is around the corner with registrations live already. So if you have happened to have missed it, uh, I've got you covered. What is intern fair? Intern fair is an internship event under Udgram, the annual entrepreneurship summit of IIT Guwahati. It is one of the best opportunities for all the fresh 